Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome again. I'm quite surprised how many of you arrived this morning after such a demanding evening arranged by Mark. Thank you very much. And I hope that uh, after this presentation, you will be willing to say that it was worth getting up so, so early and to, to come. Uh, the aim of my presentation is to shortly introduce to you how the credit management system works in a proper industrial producer, a company called Corrado. Uh, I would like to describe how the credit, man credit management system at Corrado was developed, built, and uh, what is the current setting of uh, our credit management system. Uh, let me uh, shortly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Rio, already know, it's uh, Tomáš Kolet. I've been working for Corrado Group almost for 18 years now. And the last seven years I work as head of uh, risk management. That's my main responsibility. <coughs> I will start with a short introduction of the company. Uh, the company Corrado was established in the beginning of 1990s. It's a company based in uh, Česká Cebula, which is north to Brno, maybe 90 kilometers uh, far. The main shareholders of the company are European Bank for Development and Reconstruction and also Czech governments. There are also four original founders of the company who built it uh, at the very beginning, at the very beginning uh, through a privatization process. Corrado Group consists of three production plants, Corrado Czech, Corrado Bulgaria, and a newly acquired acquisition uh, company called Likon Heat, which is also based in the Czech Republic in the city of Liberec. We have also uh, several trading companies located in Germany, Poland, the UK and Austria. Our sales guys are uh, quite proud of uh, saying that we sell our products from Australia to Chile. And so you see that uh, we are covering almost the whole world. The production portfolio consists of or includes steel panel radiators, bathroom radiators, design radiators and uh, convectors. In 2013, the group sold over 1,300,000 heating units worldwide and the consolidated turnover uh, was 1.6 billion check rounds and profit around 50 million check rounds. We expect that is, this year should be a bit better in both these parameters. Next one, yeah. This slide uh, should explain to you why we built uh, the, I would say, so strict uh, credit management at Corrado. In general, we can say that it's because of our bad experience in history. Uh, Corrado Group suffered huge losses due to irrevocable debts in the late 90s, 1990s and the beginning of the 2000s. Losses were amounting to hundreds of millions, mainly in the Czech Republic, Russia, Poland and Germany. Uh, I found out two specific features uh, for this uh, time period and this I would, uh, um, I would describe as um, sales guys were at those times responsible just for sales and they were willing to sell almost to anybody who asked for or 
who ordered uh, any radiators and they were absolutely you know, responsible for collection and they absolutely you know, cared about uh, examining the credit worthiness or credibility of our, of our customers. The second, uh, the second feature was uh, permanent competence fight between sales and finance. Uh, there was no um, clear or transparent policy set uh, from the top and the financial uh, chief financial officer and the uh, sales director were uh, fighting about their competencies and about, uh, about uh, the system of credit management itself. Although there was already some credit policy in place, uh, nobody from the top to the bottom of the company cared about it uh, too much. Uh, in general, we could say that uh, at those times the euphoria after the revolution was already over and I would say that there were just few businessmen who had experience with uh, a real market economy and uh, unfortunately there were not that many in Česká Třebova. Next one please. Mm -hmm. In 2002, Corrado due to these huge losses uh, was almost on the verge of bankruptcy so the shareholders of the company were forced to appoint or to hire new experience management so we were joined by a new CFO, <coughs> and sales and marketing uh, director and also several changes uh, in uh, personal occupancy and sales department took place those at, uh, at this year. We also installed a new remuneration system for both for our internal and also for our external sales representatives. So the current system uh, includes, uh, includes uh, incentives and also penalties for uh, collection and is not based just on sales performance. Very strict credit policy was set up at the, at, the, at the time, which we called, and or there was a synonym was used, uh, zero tolerance, and was uh, was pretty strict. So we terminated cooperation with uh, several of our uh, general customers, and we also uh, declined uh, several new opportunities. Uh, due to low credibility of uh, these new prospects. Uh, very strong authority of credit management was uh, granted by top management or by the board of uh, directors as well. Uh, our motto for uh, this period could be, could be demonstrated as uh, these two on these two last bullet points, losing customer equals to just, I would say, in inverted commas, just losing margin, which consists of, which uh, it's between 10 to 20 percent, but uh, losing the whole receivable means uh, losing 100 percent of our, of our money. Next slide, please. I already mentioned that nowadays we have very strict credit policy, which is uh, valid for the whole Corrado group. Uh, responsibility for collection is primarily at the uh, sales department. Uh, incentives, penalties uh, incorporated in the remuneration in the remuneration system, um, based on partially based on uh, collection with receivables. Uh, credit management has almost, almost unlimited uh, authority in its uh, area, granted by top management and by the 
Bo to dyrek to jest... Uh, each of our customers has its own credit limit. There are no exceptions. And in our understanding, uh, internal credit limits equals to secured limits, which means uh, secured uh, means insured or uh, credit limit uh, secured by bank uh, bank instruments. We also have a sophisticated hierarchy of credit approvals based on the volume of the credit, which starts from the level of risk management to top management and ends at board of directors. Uh, once a year, there is an approval process of all credit limits provided by Corredo. It usually takes place in uh, January and it's done on top management and board of directors level. The supervisory board of uh, the board group is informed about these uh, credit limits. Next slide, please. Uh, each credit limit, uh, each credit limit is uh, quoted in distribution contracts with our uh, customers. Credit limits are put uh, in our ERP system, which means automatic blockage once the limit is exceeded. Once uh, this situation uh, gets to this point, the sales guys are not able to dispatch the goods to our customers and they have to start a sort of negotiation with with us to unblock to unblock uh, the limit uh, apart from uh, credit limits also the payment terms which means the maturity of uh, our receivables are also approved once a year by the top management uh, the standard uh, maturity which is provided uh, by Corrado is from 60 to 90 days with quite a few exceptions uh, with 120, 120 days which is the maximum. Next slide please. I already mentioned that we use several instruments uh, within our credit management system to secure uh, to secure our receivables. So let me let me summarize them. Uh, the standard which we use the most often is uh, credit insurance. Uh, I am quite sure that, that you are quite familiar with this with this uh, insurance, uh, insurance type and Marketa is sitting <laughs> over there. She, she gave you a presentation yesterday. We also use uh, several banking instruments to secure the debt, bank guarantees and also a letter of credits. Uh, for our business model, uh, Letter of credit is not that uh, suitable, or in my opinion, doesn't doesn't make sense to use LC uh, quite often because we are not in business of individual single big deliveries. We are in business of uh, continuous deliveries. So it means several trucks with radiators a week or several trucks with radiators a month delivered to, to our customers. So using uh, standard LC would be quite administratively uh, demanding. Mm. Currently we have a few bank guarantees and standby accreditives or standby LCs opened and mostly with uh, East European, East European based customers. We have one uh, specific, which is a deposit. It's used by our Ukrainian customer. Uh, we know him for almost 20 years 
and uh, unfortunately we are not able to find out uh, any any different way how to secure the receivable with with this uh, customer so it works the way that uh, exact sum of his money is deposited in uh, our account and uh, against this money we uh, deliver him the goods and uh, it has a special special index which says if the deposit is let's say 100 the open credit is 200 so the half of the open credit is uh, at our own risk, and half is uh, secured by this by this deposit. Russian Federation and Belarusia. It's these are typical examples of prepayments or advance payments, uh, which, from credit management point of view, is the ideal ideal case because we have uh, all the money before before the delivery. On the other hand, uh, from financial point of view, it, uh, it's quite... It's not, that, it's not that interesting because it's uh, paid with quite high discounts which are, which are required by our Russian or Russian uh, customers. Bill of exchange, uh, just from time to time, and just for advance payments by paid by Corrado, which means if of if some of our uh, suppliers uh, requires uh, getting money in uh, advance, which is mainly for uh, deliveries of new technology, machines, uh, production lines, presses, and this type of deliveries, we require uh, signing the bill of exchange for the sum which is paid in advance, and also we uh, use insurance, uh, which is which is uh, offered by by other reviews. For, uh, for this specific specific uh, occasions. Uh, another type of uh, securing uh, our, our money is the retention of title to the goods, which is a clause, which is a standard clause incorporated in all our distribution contracts. Uh, nowadays we don't have to use this uh, instrument or this uh, or this uh, way how to solve uh, solve the problems too often we usually use it uh, just for uh, restructuring the inventories or stocks of our customers to help them with uh, Delivering, delivering them uh, more or uh, oftenly, oftenly uh, sold uh, goods. We have also some exceptions uh, in uh, in the system. So, if our sales guys guys are uh, interested in uh, new projects and we are not able to find. Uh, any type of uh, securing or security, any type of insurance for these uh, specific projects. Uh, there is a, there is a exception and the sales executive or top management can, uh, can approve uh, open credit without any security. But these are uh, really just exceptions, one, two two exceptions per, uh, per year. Next slide, please. Uh, there are several supporting tools which we use within our uh, 
credit management system. So we purchase uh, information, business information reports or commercial reports from uh, agencies uh, like BizNote or uh, Credit Reform. Uh, each of our new customers is uh, examined through this report and we also have uh, insolvency, insolvency monitoring provided by these agencies. We do internal financial analysis uh, and we have uh, our own internal rating model. So once we are able to get uh, financial statements of our customers uh, directly from them or from commercial registers, we also do this, uh, do this analysis. Another, another uh, good signal which uh, indicates, which indicates uh, the behavior of our customer is uh, their payment model. Uh, we have a regular meeting with our sales department once a month or extraordinary meetings if necessary where we discuss all our problematic or dubious uh, receivables and also new prospects. Regular visits to problematic customers. Um, I tried to find a time to go to, to visit them once, once a year, uh, usually with our sales representatives. And uh, it's a good opportunity to find out uh, more information about the customer than just from their pure uh, financial statement, statements. And last but not least, uh, information from our insurers which, uh, for example, says that if the limit or credit limit is lowered, it uh, gives us a negative signal that it's an indicator that uh, we should look after this customer more carefully. Next slide, please. Um, uh, as I already mentioned, credit insurance is the mostly used tool how to secure our uh, receivables at the whole current group. Uh, currently, we have uh, credit uh, insurance policies with uh, Tradius, Kupak, Hermes. All these uh, insurance policies are based on group level, which means so our uh, subsidiaries are covered uh, under these uh, policies. Um, almost 100 of our customers are secured uh, via insurance, uh, credit insurance, with uh, the exception of this uh, of our Ukrainian customer and uh, one or two more customers. We have to admit, we have to admit that although uh, insurance uh, policy is uh, much cheaper than uh, standard banking instruments, uh, it doesn't cover 100%, which uh, I'm sure that you are aware of. It usually covers from 85 to 90%. The bank, uh, bank instruments uh, cover the whole the whole 100% of the receivable. Uh, what I see what I see as a great advantage of uh, credit insurance is that it doesn't bother our customers uh, because usually it's around without arranged without their, their involvement and we have we don't have to ask them for opening bank instruments, which uh, usually is not uh, the smoothest way how to do the business with, uh, with them. But that's uh, the end uh, of my presentation. And uh, before your questions, I have a small quiz for you. So please, next, next slide. 
So the first question is, what is the amount of water in our average size radiator, which you can see on the picture? It's a radiator uh, one uh, meter uh, long, with 55 centimeters uh, height, and two panels. So, this, if you can. Mark, can we move to the yeah. The correct answer is five and a half liter, which is B. And so last one. What is the amount of water in a comparable cast iron radiator? Comparable means the same heating output or the same performance as uh, our radiator has. So, <laughs> the, the correct answer is 17 and a half, which is also B. <laughs> and it says that uh, you have to heat three times more water in this old-fashioned cast iron radi radiators than in our steel panel radiators. And uh, it should also say that it's more expensive and much less efficient. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, if you have any questions, please. Thank you, good morning. Um, looking at the presentation and uh, looking at the base of your company, I can see that it's, uh, it's basically exports. Is this correct? Uh, no, 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 no. 40 to 60. 40 for Czech Republic, 40% Czech Republic, 60% export. Okay, so okay, 60%. Now, <clears throat> let's take the case that uh, you have a new customer. I want to see the whole process end to end when a new customer is approaching the company to get uh, seeking for a credit, seeking for uh, uh, some sales. Um, the first thing that you are asking as a professional is always the proposed sales backed by a bank guarantee. That's the first step or a kind of uh, prepayment. Depends on uh, the information which is uh, provided by our sales and uh, depends on territory. For example, if the new customer is from Germany and the information from credit reform or business note is a pretty good one, we go directly to credit insurance. But for example, we have customers from Tunisia and although the reports were also good ones, we decided that uh, these uh, businesses should be covered in 100%, so we went for bank guarantee so at, the, at, at the beginning. And after a year and a half experience, we changed it to insurance. So you are taking also the risk of the country on top of the customer's risk. Okay, fair. Uh, now let's say that some of the export customers uh, okay, they cannot be insured because uh, based on our experience, uh, even though a customer is in solid condition, potentially sometimes the insurance level, the insurance limit, it's much, much lower than the proposed credit limit. Why are you doing this case? If you are not able to manage a bank, uh, bank uh, securing uh, instrument, we definitely go for, for insurance. And if the insurance doesn't work or the limit is that, that low, uh, we ask for, for prepayments. 
as I already mentioned. These, uh, these are typical examples of Russia and uh, Belarus. Mm, these uh, customers are usually uninsurable and they pay in advance. Uh, on the other hand, we pay them pretty pretty high discounts for these for these prepayments. Andrei Sichka, uh, don't want to make you a hard morning, uh, <laughs> but uh, I see that, as, as you say, 100% um, or so of your accounts receivable signed shirt, and uh, you've got very strict credit limit policy. Obviously, this is the move from absolute free on the sales to 100% of the control of the receivables of the over the receivables by credit departments quite good move uh, let me advocate the table uh, do you th how is your feeling whether or not you you control your receivables but at the same time how is your feeling whether or not your credit facility you provide to the sales is adequate to that sales are you are you sure you are not losing sales getting better and better uh, Thank you. In, in the in the um, during the crisis, because in my opinion we are still uh, heavy, 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 heavy in a crisis, and especially the construction industry where we are involved. Uh, during the crisis, it uh, it limited us definitely. It limited us. Uh, in 2009, 2010, 2011, we were not able to get uh, substantial uh, credit limits, and that was uh, quite quite difficult to negotiate or to advocate us uh, before our sales sales guys. But uh, the situation improved uh, quite a lot, and nowadays. I would say that from uh, approximately 95 95% of uh, the requirements of our sales guys we are able to to satisfy companies which don't allow prepayment or they say well we are really well-known company and we don't want to pay you prepayment and then why you do the financial analysis when it's a very large company with a good credit and then you insure it so you pay money for insurance even though the risk is small If you understand what I mean. No, sure, sure, sure. Uh, Why well, you pay for the insurance for the companies which have are known for a very good credit? It's A rating companies. So. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> mm. Two two different answers. I would say the first one is uh, our shareholder structure. Uh, European Bank for Development and Reconstruction and their general policy and uh, uh, representatives sitting on our on our boards who are quite uh, keen on having uh, almost 100% uh, 100% uh, secured that could be one of the answers. The second one is that our chief executive officer uh, comes from uh, banking sector and uh, he used to work several years in uh, for for a reputable big banks and he is quite skeptical. And the, the last one, I would say that in the history we, we saw 
several A rating, A rated companies which uh, disappeared during the crisis. So in general, we, we pay the insurance. Uh, as, I, as I already mentioned, the insurance, in my opinion, is uh, quite, uh, quite low in comparison with uh, having 100% having loss. So thanks a lot and hopefully you learned at least something from the presentation.